Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing. Let's have some fun. On the ground floor of the mall near the offices and near the parking garage, thus on the way out, was a shop called Rita's, written with big curly script across the windows. Underneath, in smaller but equally florid type, it said hair, cosmetics, nails. I figured that this was the kind of place I needed, so I went in. Fortunately, there was nobody in the place except for a tall, big-haired redhead sitting in one of the customer chairs and a 40-ish woman with short black hair sitting behind the cash register, sipping coffee and reading Vogue. I paused in front of the register. Melp you, she said, without looking up. After a second, it dawned on me that this was a contraction of, May I help you? Yes, I hope so. I launched into my sad story. I've lost a bet with my wife, and I have to spend this Sunday with her in drag. I've got the clothes, and I waved my bags at her. But I'm going to need help with my makeup and hair, I guess. But not today, first thing on Sunday. Or right after you open, because you probably don't open until noon. Can you help me out? I was babbling, and she was staring at me. But at this point, my mouth stopped. After a couple of seconds, she reached out and took hold of my chin and moved it to the left and then to the right. Then she stood up and ran her fingers through my hair, which is fairly long for a man's, but not real long, a couple of times. Then she sat back down and exhaled loudly. Let me see what's in the bags. I gave her the bags and she poked around a little, then stared into space for a couple of seconds and turned back to me. You know... The girls I usually have working Sunday would probably get you arrested. But for something like this, I'll come in myself. Then I exhaled. What I want you to do is this, she said to me. I want you to shave real close as late as you can Sunday morning. And I want you to wear something that ain't too male or too female. Jeans and a t-shirt would be okay, but you ain't gonna look like a girl coming in and you ain't gonna look like a boy going out, so you gotta straddle. And you probably ought to wear a baseball cap or something with a bill that you can pull down over your face when you leave. Less. You think you can be comfortable being seen in eyeshadow and shit. You think you can do that? Yes. I replied with more confidence than I really thought. All right, then. We open at noon, but if you came a few minutes early, I'd let you in. And honey, one more thing. You forgot jewelry. I put my purchases in the trunk and drove right home. I was so relieved to find that Carol's car wasn't in the driveway. I hauled the bags upstairs and hid them in the corner of my closet, underneath the luggage. I then poured myself a stiff drink and sat on the back steps, watching the late afternoon sun while ruminating on the day's experiences. I couldn't quite reconcile the embarrassment I felt with the image of my in my new skirt, sweater, and shoes with curves in all the right places. In a way... I couldn't wait for this Sunday to come. I didn't get any work done on Friday because all I could do was think about those bags lurking in my closet. I left the office as early as I could and headed back to the mall, where I picked up a pair of clip-on earrings, gold-colored with an imitation opal in the center, and some gold-colored bangles. I marched right into the store, right over to what I wanted, made my selections, and brought them right over to the counter. I was so proud of myself. Carol was in the kitchen when I got home, so I had to sneak the bag past her. But she still wasn't talking to me or paying any attention to me, so I didn't have to sneak too hard. Saturday was awful. I still couldn't quite figure out whether I was terrified of getting all dressed up on Sunday, or I couldn't wait to put on my new skirt. I couldn't concentrate on anything else, and all day, I kept bumping into things and dropping things. I was a mess. Finally, Sunday morning arrived. Although I hardly slept a wink, I stayed in bed until Carol went downstairs around 9.30. I went into the bathroom and took a long look in the mirror. Here it goes, I said to myself and began to shave. I usually use an electric razor, but I bought a safety razor for the occasion to get a closer shave. I was extra careful and took a long time and hoped that Rita would approve. As I stood there, washing my face... I decided in an impulsive moment to do my legs as well and put the razor and shaving cream in the shower. After wetting down under the hot spray, I foamed my legs, took a deep breath, and did it. There were a couple of moments when I felt like a pretzel. Ever try to shave the tops of your feet? But I did it. 
As I toweled off, I couldn't begin to describe the feelings I got as I rubbed my smooth, now hairless legs. Back in the bedroom, I got my bags out of the closet and found the tights. I'd watched Carol putting on pantyhose before, so I bundled up each leg in a ball and then sort of rolled them up my legs, then tugged the top up to my waist, making sure that it was snug where it ought to be snug. So far, so good. The girdle was next, and I pulled it on over the tights and then spent an agonizing couple of minutes hooking all those damn hooks. But when I was done, I glanced in the mirror, and to my surprise, I had a waist. <laughs> I had a butt, and I didn't have much in the front. Now, it wasn't much of a waist, and it wasn't much of a butt, but it was a whole lot more that I had about three minutes ago. The bra was next, and I put it on just like Andrea at Under It All had showed me. I didn't put in my baggy falsies yet. That would come later. Then I put on my new sweater and a pair of jeans. A big gray sweatshirt over the sweater, a pair of dingy white sweat socks over the tights, my sneakers, a light jacket, and my giant's cap. And I fairly streaked out the house to the car. I told Carol as I was leaving that I had a couple of errands, but I don't know if she heard me or if she cared. As I pulled out of the driveway, I realized that I had at least an hour to kill before Rita's opened, so I just sort of drove around aimlessly once I got out of my neighborhood. At first, the tightness of the girdle and the bra and the feeling of material hugging the length of my legs was a little disconcerting, but not unpleasant. But the more I drove around, the more pleasant it became. I don't know if I could ever get used to having a bra stretching across my chest and over my shoulders, but this rest of this wasn't turning out to be too bad at all. Realizing that made me more confused than ever. I pulled into the mall parking lot around 11.30 and just sat in my car gathering courage. After a few minutes of deep breathing, I opened the door and marched out towards Renee's. I went straight up to the door and Renee was there to meet me. She grinned a bit and said, I wasn't sure you'd come. She beckoned me towards one of the chairs towards the back. Mm, have a seat, hon. My name's Adele and you're... She looked at me expectantly. I looked at her with confusion and then looked at the sign on the window. I bought this place a couple of years ago and it seemed stupid to replace a perfectly good sign. You still haven't told me your name. I did. And then she tied a bib around my neck and adjusted my head until she was satisfied. I want to start with your hair because I want to try something and I won't know if it'll work until you're ready to leave. I mumbled and... Okay, I think I might be able to use your own hair, so you won't need to wear a wig. And she grabbed a couple of brushes and a comb and started attacking my hair. Attacking was the only work to use. She brushed it this way and that, pulled it up and brushed it down, and just did all kinds of things to it. When she was finished, instead of sweeping across my forehead, my hair fell in bangs. Instead of being parted on the left and swept back, it fell evenly from a part in the center. She picked up a brush that looked like a vicious drain cleaner and curled the hair that now dropped below my ears around it and then sprayed some stuff on it. When she unwrapped the hair from the brush, it held a little of the curl inwards. She did this all around the bottom. When she picked up the scissors, I almost panicked. <clears throat> Don't worry, hun. I'm not going to do anything that anyone will see when you comb it back into your boy style. What she wound up doing was evening my bangs and trimming some rebelliously uneven strands from above my collar. There! And she showed me her handiwork in the mirror. It was definitely a woman's style, and I thought it was fine, but that I looked silly in it. Great, I said, but I don't think I sounded real enthusiastic. I want to see how this holds up while I do everything else. If it's still there when I'm done, I'll show you how to brush it to keep it fresh, and you'll be all set. Then if you want to, you can comb it back to your boy style. Now let's do your nails. She reached into a small tray and dabbed something on the index finger of my left hand. This is an adhesive that will hold your nails in place. Your wife will know how to take them off, she explained as she finished with the glue and then placed a long sculpted piece of plastic over my own nail. It looked to me to stick out about six inches from my fingertip but subconsciously, I knew I was exaggerating. She finished the rest of hands, then spent a few minutes with a nail file, sanding, poking and pushing things around until she was satisfied. 
Then Adele sat back and took out some nail polish and began to paint. The color was a deep, rich, reddish brown that reminded me of mahogany. When she was finished, I couldn't describe how amazed I was at how they looked or how strange they felt. Now keep your hands still so they'll dry properly and I'll get to work on your face. You've already shaved, I hope. I nodded. Good. With that, she started to work. By this time, another couple of her assistants had come in and glanced at us, stifling giggles, but not saying anything. I began to wonder how I was going to get out of here since the mall was going to be open. She applied a creamy kind of thing all over my face, smoothing it out first with her fingers and then with a cotton ball. When she lifted my bangs to cover my forehead and they fall back into place, she smiled. Some powdery things followed. First one that was applied all over the creamy stuff she just applied, then a couple of different ones just to my cheeks. I just stared off into space. I was afraid to glance at a mirror. Now I want you to hold perfectly still, she said as she pulled out the mascara. She leaned in real close and began brushing my eyelashes upper and lower. Then she reached for a couple more different things and began to brush my eyelids and the area under my eyebrows. Your brows are a little thicker than I'd like. You want me to thin them out? They'll probably grow back. My eyes must have registered major alarm because she shook her head and said, I didn't think so. I'll just try to shape them a little. She took a tiny comb and began to comb my eyebrows. Then, after she was done with that, she stepped back and looked at me. I was so self-conscious I was sure I was blushing furiously. She touched my chin and moved my head a little this way and that and then spent the next few minutes dabbing and poking at my with various things. Blink, I did. Shake your head, I did. Well, I think I did a pretty good job. How about you, hun? She made me look into the mirror and what I saw shocked me. I looked good. I looked very good. Staring back at me was the face that could have belonged to a successful businesswoman. Short, no-nonsense haircut, dark eyes touched with shades of gold and brown, and flawless skin with a touch of color on the cheeks. The only thing missing was lipstick. Even I knew enough to know that lipstick was missing. I didn't put the lipstick on Hun because it would show up too much when you leave. If you pull your cap down low, most of your face will be hidden and folks will probably not notice that you're wearing makeup. Put on the lipstick now and they're gonna know. I silently blessed her. So what I want you to do is to pay real close attention when I show you what to do and you can put it on yourself when you get home. She showed me what to do and then gave me the tube. She also showed me what to do with my hair. <sighs> After sticking it under that cap and driving home, it's going to need a touch-up. When it came time to pay her, I had the hardest time trying to get my wallet out of my pants with those nails. When I finally succeeded, I realized I didn't know what the tipping conventions were in a place like this. I gave her a big tip anyway. You're usually not supposed to tip the owner, she said. But in this case, I think it's appropriate, she smiled. Have a good time today, hun. As I opened the door to leave, I heard Adele call after me. Hey, hun. I turned around. Hands in the pockets until you get to your car. I drove home as fast as I could, making sure to keep my hands on the bottom of the steering wheel. When I got home, I headed straight upstairs, catching a glimpse of Carol sitting on the couch reading a book. I took one of her brushes and brushed my hair back into condition. Then I took out my lipstick and carefully applied it to my lips exactly as Adele had instructed. Off came the sweat socks, the jeans, and the sweatshirt. I should have waited to fix my hair, I said to myself. I took my skirt out of the closet and put it on, pulling the belt tight to emphasize my waist. I knotted my scarf and draped it around my neck and over my left shoulder. Next came the earrings and the bracelets. I started to bend over to get my shoes, but about halfway down, I thought that bending over wouldn't be very ladylike, so I squatted down and then sat on the bed to put them on. As I stood up, I didn't know what to expect, but when I straightened up and looked in the mirror, I felt and looked simply wonderful, and I was amazed at myself. A quick check in the mirror made me remember that I forget a couple of very important items, and I got my breasts from the drawer and put them in place, 
readjusted the sweater and the skirt, rebrushed my hair, squirted on a little of Carol's favorite perfume, and then walked down the stairs as quietly as I could. In the kitchen, I placed the video, two glasses, and the bottle of wine on a basket. One last glimpse in the downstairs bathroom mirror, and I was ready. I peeked into the living room and said, Tada, in as quiet, breathy, and romantic a voice as I could muster. Then I swirled into the room, placed the tray gently on the coffee table, and spun around in front of Carol. The expression on her face was priceless. Surprise gave way to shock, which gave way to a couple of lonely tears running down her face, and then the widest smile I'd seen on her in years. All the money, time, and embarrassment of the last few days was worth it just to see the smile on her beautiful face. Honey, I love you so much, she said, as she stood up and hugged me. We kissed and hugged with a deep, loving passion. I love you too, Carol, and I'm so sorry for the way I've acted. I'd tell you the rest of this story, but there are some things between a husband and a wife that must remain private. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for early access and exclusive content. <laughs>